Good day and welcome again here at Rhythm Church, our online service. And thank you for get, again for tuning in and enjoying watching this with us. Now here at Rhythm Church, we're busy looking at Christmas, the, the walk to Christmas, the wait for Christmas. And something about Christmas just stirred inside of me of the hope that comes with Christmas. As I was praying through Christmas uh, scriptures, messages, all of a sudden I realized something. Christmas happened in the center of a big crisis. And there was a crisis going on with the birth of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, Herod killing babies of the two years and younger. So the Jewish, pe Jewish people felt uh, oppressed, depressed, and they felt, well, it's terrible what's going on. And in the midst of that, God was doing a miracle. It made me think about the whole of history. In the center of chaos, in the middle of people going through terrible, terrible stuff, God is busy working. In fact, He's already preparing stuff for the future. And I'm, I was just thinking, maybe the devil is even more sensitive to the spiritual world than what we are. And, and I think it's true. Uh, we don't get the times. We don't read the times. We, we are so physical. We are so in finance, so in everyday day job doing, busy, crazy in our minds that we miss the sensitive stuff. We, we've become dull to the spiritual world, the unseen world. But the devil, he's alert. So he knows God is busy with stuff and then he creates this chaos to attack people, to kill people because he's trying to kill God's plan. And, and so many times we miss it in the middle of a crisis. It's not so much the devil just creating the crisis. It is more God that is busy with a plan and then the devil wants to come and create chaos to stop people from believing God's plan. So, so crisis actually means God is working. Crisis means the devil is afraid. He's jumping up and down trying to stop it. The devil is going mad because God is busy with a plan. God is busy with revelation, salvation. God is busy preparing for, for world uh, a, a great revival to come and the devil is doing everything to stop it. So let's go into history and let's just take, check out scripture. Proof that in crisis time, God is actually busy preparing for a big miracle, for a bigger work. God is in control. God's got this. L let me tell you the story of Moses. Such a beautiful story. In, in Exodus 1, it says that, Pharaoh became afraid of the Israelites because of the number they had grown and the amount of people and the strength of, of the Israelite nation. So Pharaoh, Pharaoh commanded the killing of all the babies, three years of boys, uh, Jewish boys, three years and younger. It's in Exodus 1.22. It says, Then Pharaoh gave this order to all these people, every Hebrew boy that is born, uh, must be thrown into the Nile River, Nile River, but let every girl live. So, so he's giving this command. It's a world crisis. I mean, we read it and we just go on and say, yes, he threw all the boys in the river. I mean, it, think about it. I've got three boys. If, if the government brings out an order or a law or whatever that they can touch my boy, I mean, it will be madness. COVID-19 will be a baby. I mean, we, we will go crazy. So this was a world crisis. All the baby boys, three years and younger, will. why did it happen? Not Pharaoh, the devil. He knows God is busy planning the salvation of his people. So he's trying to stop it. He's, he's trying to, you know, this whole thing about abortion. Uh, the legalizing of abortion, putting money and funding into abortion clinics. I mean, what is that different than killing all the babies three years and younger? Why are the devil working on this? Why, why, why is it law? Why, why is it legal all of a sudden to do and kill and murder babies? 
Ain't it maybe the devil knowing God is up to something? There are youngsters being born that can reshape the earth, Christianity, church, that can take the gospel with technology and internet to places and ways we, we don't know of yet. God is busy planning revival for the world and the devil is busy killing all the babies three years and younger or try to kill them or legalize it. Maybe we must just... Can you see the signs? Just don't be so dull in your thinking just because it's government, it's politics, it's just this. No, there's a spiritual world and God is busy and the devil are trying to stop him. So see deeper. Pharaoh's story. Let's go back. So the next verse, uh, chapter 2, Exodus 2 verse 1 says, During this time, a man from the tribe of Levi married a woman of his own tribe. And she bore him a son. I, I love this, uh, these words. It says, during this time. My question is, during this time of COVID-19, what are you doing? What are you believing? How are you living? Because during this time, a man married a woman and they got a baby boy. That's crazy. Who will get a boy in the middle of a world crisis when they are killing boys? Nobody? No, not this man and woman. And they're getting this baby, Moses, and he will be the deliverer. You see, during this time, amazing things can happen. happen. During this time, you can be in the center of the will of God. God can use you, bless you, change you. During this time, amazing things can happen. My question is, do you still believe it? Do you know that God is in control? It's not just the normal time. It's a special time. It's God's time. During this time, a man married a woman. They got a baby. I mean, it's crazy times. During this time in COVID, you can meet people. You can get a new job. During this time in COVID, your economy, your spiritual life, your faith can ch change. During this time, nobody is attending churches. Church uh, uh, visits are going down. During this time, you can be different. Get a baby and be part of God's plan. So during this time, a man married a woman and they get a son. When she saw what a fine baby he was, she, she hid him for three months. But when she could not hide him any longer, she took a basket made of reed and covered it with tar to make, make it watertight. She put the baby uh, in it and pl then placed it in the tall grass at the edge of the Nile River. The baby sister stood some distance away to see what would happen to him. Amazing again in this story. The same Nile River, Pharaoh said, go and murder the babies in that same river uh, the mother of Moses went and gave him a basket and she went and hid him in the same river. You need to see this. The same thing that can destroy one person can make another person. It was the Nile River that killed people. It was the same Nile River that saves Moses' life. It is all about your faith. It is all about your decisions you make. It's all about the way you're going to trust God to be in control. The same Nile River other people were afraid of not getting babies, afraid to keep babies away from the river. She took him and gave him a basket. I want to say to you, God can make you a basket so that you can float on top of COVID-19, that you will survive financially, that you will survive spiritually, that you will grow, not just survive, that you will grow, that this time will be the best time of your life because you've trusted God the same thing that destroys one can make another. I've seen this so many times. The same situation that can destroy a family, death of a loved one or a loss of a job or a divorce or whatever. The same situation that destroys one person's faith, emotional life, 
everything about the whole family just collapses. That same thing can happen to another family and God uses it. They give it to God. They surrender to God. They keep their faith in God strong. They walk the walk and the talk and they in God with their pain and their suffering. They don't turn against God. They turn towards God in their pain and that thing makes them. It gives them a testimony. It changes their lives. It gives them a vision and a future. And the same thing happened to both families. One is being destroyed. The other one is... I mean, it's the story of this, the, you can build your house on the rock and the storm comes and the wind blow and the rain comes. If your house is on the sand, it will be destroyed. If your house, the same storm, same rain, same wind, same thing happened to the another guy. But his house was built on the rock. He survived. It's all about your faith. So in crisis time, what are you believing? What are you doing? How are you surrendering to God? So the story, the Moses story, um, th let's carry on with it. So uh, the, the daughter of Pharaoh comes, comes and she takes a bath. She hears the baby cries. She takes him home. Long story short, he's been raised in the palace. Amazing life, but he knows he's a Jew, a Hebrew. And he sees the Egyptian man hitting a Hebrew. He hits the Egyptian man, kills him. A few days later, he saw two Hebrew, Hebrew men fighting. He tries to stop them. They say to him, we know you've killed the uh, Egyptian guy. The Pharaoh find out that one of his guys, uh, Moses, killed one of the Egyptians. So now Pharaoh is off to Moses. He flees into the desert and he thinks his life is over. I mean, he's in the desert. Um, he marries Sephora. Uh, uh, Jethro is his father-in-law and he's looking after the sheep. Maybe you remember last week and suddenly... Suddenly the bush is on fire in front of him and God calls him and Moses becomes the deliverer. A long time later from the big crisis, God was actually all the time working towards the, the deliverance of his people, a new revival coming to the world. I'm going to show to you in history the Moses story has taken place over and over and over again. And this COVID crisis maybe is one of these times again where God is actually moving and touching lives. And it depends on your choices. It depends on the way you're going to see Christmas. It depends on how you're going to act daily that maybe you're going to be part of God's calling. So let, listen to this. Exodus 2.23 it says, Years later... The king of Egypt died, the Pharaoh, but the Israelites were still groaning under their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry went up to God, who heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He saw the slavery of the Israelites and was concerned for them. Years later, 40 years later, Moses born, long story, everything saved him palace, married, desert. 40 years later, God heard their prayers. Now, He didn't hurt them that day. He heard them 40 years before. And He put a baby on earth and He raised him right through the whole story to bring him as their deliverer 40 years later. I mean, amazing story, people, of God planning. The day you prayed, for something and something good is happening, God didn't decide that morning that He's going to fix your problem. He has decided it years ago by making somebody come alive, you meeting somebody, somebody years later touches your life, 20 years old, 30 years, 40, 50 years old people in your life touches you. It means that 50 years ago, God has already known your prayer, planned somebody, made somebody go through stuff, learn some stuff, and today they are touching your life as a proof of God answering your prayer today. But it actually happened years ago. Do you get this? God is in control. There ain't such a thing as a world crisis. There ain't such a thing as God doesn't know what's going on. This is catching God offside. And what are we going to do? And how are we going to handle it? And is God hearing us? Is God seeing this? God's got this. 
And he's planning ahead of time and he's already got the salvation, the revelation, the revival, the deliverance. He's got this. <laughs> I mean, my God, your God is so amazing. He know what he is doing in every crisis. He's got plans. He's got deliverance. He's got some amazing stuff. So I went and I searched on the internet. I'm not a clever guy. The internet's got all the details. Um, the 10 biggest plague in world's history and what the church did and how it influenced the world and what role the church played in the biggest uh, plagues in world history. Phenomenal, phenomenal reading. Go and bless yourself and just go and read the church's history in world plagues. I'm just going to give you four of the biggest plagues quickly. Just, just shortly what God did and how He worked for His church and for His future in some of the biggest plagues we have seen in history. First one, in 156 after Christ, uh, 65, sorry, 165 after Christ, there was an Antonin plague and it killed 5 million people in the Europe area. Now what happened there was, listen to the date, 165, it is 130 years of the new church being underground, being oppressed, prosecuted, people trying to uh, um, hurt the church, persecute them, try to uh, destroy the church. 130 years later, the Roman Empire was invincible. I mean, they were so strong, so mighty. They took up more and more space and land and property. They just took over the whole modern world at that time and they oppressed the church. And God sends a plague or the devil or, well, there was a plague. And you know who was hit the hardest? The Roman army. The soldiers, the, this, this mighty force marching all over the world, just taking in more and more and more property, just making the Caesar stronger and stronger and the Roman Empire stronger, oppressing the Christian and the new faith of Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, this plague. And five million people die, most of them, the soldiers living in these tents, going on this crusade, and all of a sudden, the Roman army started losing. All of a sudden, the Roman Empire is coming to a collapse. So much so, 140 years later, the Roman Empire took in, took in the church, and church and the Roman Empire became one. And Rome said, we will not be able to grow and defeat our enemies if the church is not with us. Where did it start? It? A plague 140 years ago. You see, God's in control, people. He's got this. He will let Moses be born and 40 years later there will be a deliverer. And the 10 plagues and the Red Sea will open and God will do amazing stuff. But he planned it way ahead. Church and state becomes one and the church grows for the first time. It's amazing. Church has been delivered. It started 140 years ago when there was a plague. God uses this stuff. Another one, 541 after Christ, the Jesustine or Jestinine plague kills 25 million people in that area, that Roman uh, uh, Europe area. 25 million people. Let me give you the history. That was the birth of of the saints of the church, the holy people, the, the truly saint living holy people. What happened was after church and state became 1300 after Christ, um, the church did very well, but as soon as church do too well, it's not good for them. Persecution is good for the church. Suffering is good for people. But then we pray better. We see God better. It's better when we just have something to struggle with than just living in this luxury lives of, uh, of ours. Same happened to the church. And all of a sudden, the bishops and the leaders and the priests of church, they started doing bad stuff, bad sin, loving money, all kinds of adultery, all kinds of misuse and disorders. And the church are starting to decline in their holiness and their influence and the evangelism of changing lives. So 541, big plague hit the world. What happened? The saints started moving out. They would go and stay in deserts. They would go and stay 
in, 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 in desolated places and just spend time praying, seeking God, living for God. And they would start writing amazing journal letter, letters back to the church. Um, that letters are still available today. The saints, uh, I'm calling them John the Silent, not me, the saint's name, John the Silent, um, the Gregory the Great, uh, John uh, Cleopatras, and uh, I mean, they said it was a born of 1,500 saints in the middle of the 4th century, 541 after Christ, because of this plague. A new birth for the church. The saints coming forward, writing stuff. I mean, some of those guys, um, John Clumarcus, uh, something like that, some of his writing books, it is still available today. I mean, Gregory the Great, you can still read his letters. It is like 1,500 and something years ago, and those letters and writings are still bestsellers, amazing spiritual theology, amazing deep stuff about God, Christ, the church, the calling, our lives. I mean, with today's technology, internet and all of that, we can't have that same influence even if we dream about it. A guy in the desert writing stuff about God and Jesus and 1,500 years later, it is still available without internet, without a cell phone and iPhone and putting it in the cloud, just putting it in the spirit, just writing it to God and to church and honestly to God because of a plague. 541 after Christ, the changes God wrote. Let's give me a, you another one. In 13, the 1300, 1346 after Christ, they called it the Black Death Plague. This one was terrible. This one killed between 100 and 200 million people. I mean, COVID is a baby against these plagues. And this plague created the start of the Reformation. Now, if you know church history, the start of the Reformation what is what give, gave Martin Luther the way to write the thesis, to start the Protestant movement, and to have a, one of the biggest, largest influences on the church history single-handedly. It all started with this plague. In the middle of this plague, two guys, I, I've got their name, John Hayseen and Jan Hus, uh, the guys started writing about the church and the health of the church. And they started copying the Bible. Remember, only the priest had Bibles. Nobody was allowed to have the Bible, the written word of God. Only the clergy, the holy, ha the holy people uh, was allowed to have it. Only when you was one of them. you could. And these guys start writing the just to live by faith and we can all have the Bible, tra Bible translated and into my language and I can read it and study it. The 95 Thesis, um, Martin Luther put on the church, the doors, church doors that started the whole uh, Reformation out of the Roman church. That 95 Thesis was found, found 140 years ago by... John Hayseen in the time of the Black Death, when he was isolated. In fact, he was killed because of the stuff he has written for the church. They murdered him because of that, but they couldn't stop the pen. And his writings just went on and on and on, right through that time of terrible time of death. And uh, Martha Luther picked them up and he studied on them further and he brought it out and that changes history. Again, out of a sad season. Let me give you a last one. In our time, 1918, very well known, the Spanish flu. When the COVID started, so many people went back to the Spanish flu and did some research on that. Around about 50 million people died. Um, there are so many writings about it. The people would say, you would meet a family in the morning and they would say, somebody died of their family. Could we do a funeral on Saturday? And before Saturday, all those people who were sitting in front of you would have died. They, they call it the Spanish flu was terrible, terrible. Even in America, it killed millions of people. What happened in that time? Let me give you a true, true story. 
uh, Catherine Kuhlman. She was an 11 year old girl in 1980 and she saw family members died and she started praying, Lord God, don't let me die, save me. And she got saved three years later in 1921. She saw a crusade of healing taking place and it was amazing and she said never again. She wants to be afraid for the Spanish flu. Never again. And God must give her anointing and the Holy Spirit. Now go and search Catherine Kuhlman on your, on your internet. She had one of the biggest healing ministries in America. Changing, touching thousands, thousands, thousands of lives. And it all started 1918 in the Spanish flu time. Uh, in that same time, there was another lady, Amy Simple McPherson. Now Amy... She's the starter of the church that I'm part of, the Four Square Church. And she started also because of the Spanish flu. Now, all I want to get to is this. In the middle of the biggest crisis, God is in control. God works. And there are people in this crisis with God calling them to do ministry, to bring changes, to pray, to give their lives to God. So Amy Simple McPherson in this time sees, sees all the pain, all the suffering in Los Angeles. She started praying for God to anoint her. God sends her. She knows she must preach. She starts this four square movement. And now today there are more than 13,000 mission churches all over the world because of this lady out of the Spanish flu, seeing death and just pray, God, use me. So what I'm getting at for you, in your house, there are teenagers, youngsters, there are women, boys, girls, and they're feeling depressed because of COVID. They're uncertain about their future. But if you give them faith, maybe God calls them. If you can stir in them that in the same Nile that killed the babies, Moses was put on in a basket, God will protect you and send you and use you. If you just give your life to God and surrender to Him, maybe who knows what's going to happen in 2050 or 2040, 20, 30 years from now with the youngsters and the way they gave their hearts and their spirits and their faith to God in COVID. And out of COVID, we will write one day, they were born in COVID. When everybody said it's crazy to marry and get kids and go out and have a life and blah, blah, blah in the future. And maybe, who knows, 2050, we will write about them saying, wow, look what they've done for church, for God, for people, for this whole world. I want to end. It's Christmas time. <laughs> What a great time. We love Christmas, singing songs and bells and gifts and all of that. But do you know Christmas time was born in a time of crisis? Because of Jesus, there came this big crisis again on the Jews where King Harold wanted to kill all the baby boys. Again, that same story. And again, I'm saying this whole attack of the whole abortion thing why does the devil want to kill so many babies? Can I tell you why? Because there is a revival coming through some of them. God are raising up pastors in your house, youngsters in your house, musicians in your house that God is going to use and the devil wants to kill them. So in that time, the devil wants to kill Jesus. Let's read it together. The final scripture, Matthew 2, 13, it says, After they had left, that's the wise men, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph and said, Herald will be looking for the child in order to kill him. So get up, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt and stay there until you, <coughs> until I tell you to leave. Again, just listen, he must go to Egypt. And God took the whole of Israel out of Egypt. You know, the one thing, <laughs> this is, the one thing that kills one family, destroys one family, can make another. God, are take, God is taking out Israel out of Egypt and He's sending Joseph and Jesus back to Egypt. We, we can get so easy confused about God can use COVID. God is in the middle of COVID. COVID is not a surprise to God. He can send us right in the middle of it and say, I've got this. Don't you fear. You can go back to Egypt I've got this, all right? Uh, and he says, Joseph got up, took the child and his mother and left during the night for Egypt, where he stayed until Herod, Herod, Herod died. 
This was done to make what the Lord had said through the prophet come true. I call my son out of Egypt. When Harold realized that the visitors from the east had tricked him, he was furious. He gave orders, listen to this, he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its neighborhood who were two years old and younger. This was done in accordance with what he had learned from the visitors about the time when their star had appeared. In this way, what the prophet Jeremiah had said came true. A sound is heard in Ramah. The sound is bitter weeping. Rachel, Rachel is crying for her children. She refuses to be conformed for they are to, to be comforted for they are dead. You see, Jesus, Christmas time, was the first Christmas was in the middle of COVID. The first Christmas was in the middle of a crisis. Jesus was born and, and thousands, hundreds, I don't know, babies died. Two-year-old sons died in the middle of this crisis. And the angels sing, we are bringing to you good news. And people are crying. They can't be comforted. Because what's happening to the world? It's a destruction of the world. The economy is destroyed. People's lives are being destroyed. This is terrible. And I agree, it is terrible. But see the other side. What's on the other side? This is an attack by the devil on the plan God has to save us. 30 years later, Jesus would die on the cross. And through his death, not one year, two year, five year, ten year of hope comes along. No, no, no. Hundreds and hundreds of years of hope, of faith, of encouragement, of an upliftment, of changes comes because of his death. 30 years later, he dies on a cross. He paid the price for you and me. Salvation comes along. Deliverance comes along. In no other name except the name of Jesus, you will be saved and for hundreds of years and now we're going to thousands of years Jesus Christ changes people and changes lives you see in the middle of the crisis God is in control it's your choice do you want to believe it do you want to use it do you want to raise your kids with that kind of faith do you want to raise your house and everything saying in the middle of this crisis, God got this. God is in control. God knows what he's doing. God loves us. God got this. He's got a little a, a ba basket for us in the middle of the Nile River. While everybody is crying fear, we're crying hope, faith, Christmas. The first Christmas was in the middle of a crisis because God was planning the salvation of people. Let's get personal. Your life is maybe in a crisis. And you think, God, why don't you hear me? Let's go back to Moses' story. God was hearing. And God was busy working on the problem. And God was raising Moses to come and save the Israelites. You see, God is hearing you. And He is busy working on the plan He's got to save you, to change you, to deliver you, to provide for you. God is busy. The question is, can you stand in faith? Can you keep on believing? Will you keep on believing? Will you keep on giving to Him your faith, your life, your love, and say, I trust you. You've got this. So that's Christmas. When you are down in the dumps and you are living in crisis, this Christmas, what about you say, God's got this. Christmas, this tree, this gift, this lights, all of the beautiful stuff around us is proof that God's got this. He's in control. No crisis is just a crisis. Crisis is the devil trying to create fear. The devil is trying to stop. The devil is trying to destroy the work God is doing and planning. Do you believe it? Can you give your life to him? Are you willing to surrender to Him and just say, God, you've got this. You are in control. I give you my kids in my house. They are negative. Online school, it's difficult. They don't see their friends. What's going on? The future, when is this going to change? Maybe one of your kids, boys, girls, are the next move of God, the next song that will change people's lives, the next whatever on internet and Facebook, TikTok, all of this, me and you, the older people, we don't even understand it. Who knows? Maybe, maybe. 
this whole attack of COVID and, and abortion and all. It's the devil trying to stop the next move of God. And me and you, we've got a choice. Will we be in that move? I want to be there. What's the way to be in that move? Believe, faith, hope. Give your life, surrender. Say, God, you've got this. I trust you. Even, even in the midst of my crisis, I trust that you are in control. This Christmas, I give my fear. I give all of my future. I give all of my kids. I give all of my anxieties and say, God, you've got this. You are in control. And God, use us. Use me, use my kids, use my family in any way you want so that you can use them for your revival, your dream, your salvation, deliverance, whatever you want to do. God, you've got this. I trust you and use me. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for history. History proves that Nothing, nothing can rattle God. Nothing can unsettle God. Nothing can disturb your plan, your peace, everything you've got for us. And right now, we just want to pray, God, we believe you've got this. In the middle of crisis, you are busy. You are busy preparing. You are busy setting up normal people. Uh, in this time, a man and a woman gets together and they get a son and a boy or a girl. And everybody thinks it's crazy. But God, this is your time. You are busy. You are working. And we just declare and we just give you our faith, our trust. And we even want to say we give you our, we want to work with you. We, we want to give our bodies to you and say use us in whatever way you want. Use us for your salvation, for your plan, for your deliverance. Thank you for this. Thank you for Christmas. Christmas was born in a crisis and it proves to us that you've got this. You are in control. We love you. We thank you. And thank you that you've got our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for watching. I truly believe this message can encourage you, pick you up. God's got this. He's in control. Crisis proves that God knows what He is doing. And the devil is just trying to stop it. Thanks again. God bless. See you again.